Hello, 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 hello. Hi there. Today I'm coming to you because we have had a lot of posts from the official Water and Wave Twitter account and just on their blog. And we've received a lot of information. The patch is coming out in two days, the patch 1.4, when the night knocks. And we now have a lot of info regarding banners, um, more details regarding the events and the reward. And I kind of want to go over them um, quickly, as well as some Camellia stuff. So let's check those out. We already covered what the events are going to be, but here we have a bit more detail, right? So we knew that we we're going to get like some combat events and stuff like that. So here, first and foremost, the main event is going to be the Somnium Labyrinth Summoner Adventure events. We're going to get the companion story, the new Phantom Echo, the weapon projection. We already know all of that. Uh, but now, what we have here is more detail regarding the actual reward. So here we can see the Somnium Labyrinth Somnoir Adventure event. This event includes three sub-events, Dreamscape Odyssey, Rift Runner, and Nightmare Revisits. Rescue your Resonator companions from their dreamscapes. Together you will delve deep into the Somnoir to uncover the truths behind the nightmares. And here we can see we have both limited and permanent reward. And as they say here, there are two types of reward available in this event. During the limited time event period, you can earn exclusive rewards that are only available for a short time. After this period ends, the event will become a permanent event, allowing you to participate in at any time to earn permanent reward. So, you need to be Union level 17 to actually participate. And you can see here that we're actually getting quite a fair bit of reward. So limited time wise, aka you gotta do them right now, is gonna be 800 Astrite, the Somnor Anchor, which is a 4 star sword weapon, the Projection Somnor Anchor, which is essentially a cosmetic that you can apply on any sword you have, a Hearty Supper, which is what you use to actually increase the synchronization level of your weapon here, and finally, a forgery premium supply, which allows you to get a lot of goodies that you're going to need for uh, leveling up your weapon and ascending them, right? I'm pretty sure. Now, for the permanent reward, we also get 400 Astrite, which means if you're going to be playing right now, you can get up to 1200 Astrite, which is, uh, you know, a bit less than 10 pools, but it's still something. We're also going to get a few malleable El Elite Class Echoes 1 and 2. These are the one you pick the Echo you want, you get a fixed main stat. It can be very useful for obvious reasons. Now we're also going to get some Premium Resonance Potion, which is um, XP for your characters, and Premium Energy Core, which I believe is... Is that Weapon XP? I feel like this is Weapon XP. Alright, so anyway, lots of good rewards, pretty, pretty cool. Moving on, we are also going to be getting a Gift of Fleeting Dream. This is this classic 7-day login event, in which we'll be able to get 5 Radiant Tide, which is the premium currency for limited time banners, as well as 5 Lustrous Tide, which is the permanent banner. So this is 5 premium pools and 5 permanent pools. Uh, moving on, we also are getting a update to the Depths of Elusive Realm called Phantasm Amass. The new content, Phantasm Amass, is now available. Step into surreal, ever-shifted dreamscape where new maps await, exploration and formidable enemies lurk in the shadow, and uncover the secret that lies within. From doing this, you'll be able to get a thousand Astrites, the Phantom um, for the Infernal Rider, which is the shiny Echo, as well as some Malleable Elite Class Echoes, Premium Sealed Tube, which I believe is... Is this the XP for the Echoes? But I, I, I can't with those names. There's too many games with too many names for all those like resources. I'm losing my mind. And you can also get the basic formless... Projection. So the formless projections are essentially cosmetic that you apply to your weapons and it makes them partially invisible or fully invisible, right? If you want to look like you're, you're not having anything uh, equipped. Uh, to be eligible for that, you need to complete some quests and a lot of good good. Uh, 
interestingly enough, you do need to actually do when the night knocks, which is the main event before you can access this. Now, moving on, we are having some information regarding the exploration events beyond the wave. During the event, complete event objectives once per day to obtain a set number of adventure logs. Each adventure log can be exchanged for a random adventure package. And from here, you can see that we get up to 400 Astrite, 5 Luster Style, which is a permanent pulse, a forgery premium supply, which is nice, at premium tuner, those for tuning your echoes, as well as crystal solvent, which are just stamina, right? So that's pretty good. Now we have a Tactical Simulacra 2, which is a featured combat event. Um, this is the second version of the Tactical Simulacra. And here we can get 600 strides, some Echoes, Premium Closer Tank, and Premium Tuner. Very cool. We are also getting the Raguna Cells Blitz, which is a Pioneer Association event. Alana will be releasing a new investigation quest each day. Complete the surveys to earn corresponding rewards and have a glimpse into the world of Rinaskita, which I don't know what it is. But um, I mean, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Now we can get 240 Astrite, some Resonance Potion, Advanced Energy Core, and Advanced Seal Tube, and Shell Credit. So this is essentially a nice way to give us a lot of XP material that we are sorely needing. Uh, into th this is there's been a lot of complaint about how hard it was to actually like you know level up your character and stuff like that. So this is one of those events that actually aim to fix that. It's probably going to give us like a million shell credit and stuff like that. Uh, that's been the case for past uh, events like this. So hopefully it is the same again. Now moving on, we have the Pincer Maneuver Warrior, which is a recurring combat event. In Pincer Maneuver Warriors, challenge waves of powerful enemies by controlling two teams with special buffs across two separate simulated battlefields. And here we can see we have... The Pincer Maneuver Warrior 1, which is going to be just after the release, and it will last until 12-12, uh, which is going to be December 12th. And then, from December 12th to the 1st of January, we are going to be getting the Pincer Maneuver Warriors 2. And we can see that for the first part of the event, we're going to get 300 Astrite, a lot of, like, you know, uh, XP material, and shell credit. And the second part, we're going to get 300 additional Astrite, Forgery Premium Supply, Premium Enclosure Tank, and Shell Credit. Uh, now, we also are going to get the classic limited time double drop event, which we've come to expect. Um, spend Wave Play to claim double reward after completing a Tacit Suppression Challenge. So this is for the double echo drop rate. We're going to get the Bountiful Crescendo, which is the double drop event for uh, simulation and forgery challenges. And that is it when it comes to all of those um, events. Now, we also have the banner. We actually have information for those banners. So the first banner, the first phase is going to be Camellia. And we now know that the four stars are going to be Danjin, Yang Yang, and Alto. Um, this is a bit underwhelming, I would say. Um, like, if you do get Camellia, you can get some Danjin, some Danjin copies. Uh, she's also have a character, so maybe it's the way of saying like, okay, so if you don't get the, the main DPS Camellia that you wanted, you still get another DPS, that's like pretty good. She's like the go-to character that people use for like solo content. Then we have Yang Yang, who's a okay support. I feel like, while she's not absolutely like incredibly powerful, I think she's a little bit slept on. She's still very useful, she can give some energy with her outro skill, I believe. And there is definitely some value there. And most four-star characters, they also get, like, a team-wide buff once you get some constellation, which is not bad at all, right? So that's a possibility. Alto still hasn't really found his place. We are still lacking some win character that could benefit from him. Uh, the problem right now is that the, the premium win DPS, that is Gian, benefit more from heavy attack, which is Mortify's, Mortify's buff. Um, so Alto is really not seeing any use whatsoever, and I don't expect he's gonna see some use, even though Camelia is gonna be here, but you know, it's Blackshore, so maybe they decide to go with that theme. And Yang Yang, she's a, she has a little bit of grouping and some... she can be used. Now, we get to see her weapon as well, the Red Spring, beautiful weapon, and we are getting the Fusion of Creation, Commando of Conviction, and Nova Burst. Um, so here, I, uh... I know that Commando Conviction actually does see some use here and there. It's not a bad weapon. 
Um, for example, I know it's a pretty good weapon for a character like um, San Hua, for example. And overall, it's a very, very good sword. Um, essentially, it allows you to... Um, it allows you to essentially have a big buff when you come onto the field and you have a very strong uh, damage increase, right? Uh, it, it gives you... What is it exactly? I think it's just like a lot of attack for like 15 seconds, I think. I think it's like when you enter the field via intro skill, you get like a, a big 15 attack, 15 attack buff for like 15 seconds. And um, I think this goes up as you uh, ascend the weapon more and more, right? I think that can go up to 30 percent. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's an attack percentage scaling weapon. Um, so that can be good, especially for like sub DPS and stuff like that, right? Um, I think on main DPS, you probably want some crit weapons. Uh, but this is definitely not bad for uh, in any case. Now, for the fusion accretion, um, if you haven't had it or don't know about it, essentially it's an attack scaling weapon. And when you cast your resonance skill, it grants you uh, 10 resonance energy as well as an increased attack by 20% for 16 seconds, which is pretty good. Um, it, it's it's good if you if you are lacking that attack percentage. Uh, allows you to focus on, on crit substats, and not care about attack lines. I think it's an okay weapon for some DPS if you don't have any, you know, premium um, five star or, um, you know, what it called? A rectifier. So it's, it's not bad. It's definitely not bad. This is more for your DPS, sub DPS. I'm sure some character like uh, Yinlin, for example, can make use of that. Or even, you know, um, a character like. Uh, uh, JG, for example. Now, moving on to Nova Burst. Uh, Nova Burst is a pistol. Uh, the problem I have when it comes to pistol is that I, I really don't use pistol characters. That said, uh, this one essentially, every time you dodge, you get an attack percentage buff, which is like 8% at R5, I believe. And uh, it stacks up to three times. So essentially, if you do a lot of dash and dodges, you can get up to 24% attack bonus, which to be fair, works pretty well with Alto because he likes to dash and dodge very often with these like passageways and doors and whatnot. So this could be a weapon for him if you wanted to. Uh, and there you go. So overall, the banner, I think getting copies of Commando Conviction and potentially Fusion Accretion is definitely not a bad idea if you do intend to pull here. Nova Burst, that really depends on you. I don't think, um, I think so far we haven't had a single like five star pistol user, which is pretty sad to be honest. So hopefully that does happen at some point. Uh, but in the meantime, it's a four star weapon. If you like uh, Shiksha and stuff like that, it, this could be useful. Now, move in on. We are obviously going to get some Resonator trial event where you can try Camellia and the corresponding characters. But now we have the second phase banner. We have the rerun of When Thunder Pours as well as Celestial Revelation. So we're going to get the rerun for both Yinlin and Changli Yao. And the four star on banner are going to be Lumi, which is a new character. From what I know, I believe she's an Electro. I don't know actually about her type, but I think she's Electro. She might be. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, she, she, feel, she has a light bulb. I feel like it has to be Electro. And she's a Claymore user. We saw in the, the cinematics and the, the, the trailer, it seems like a mouse, like the, the flying plush that she has, is actually holding the Claymore. So that's an interesting one. Um, so very interesting characters. I, I definitely do want to try to get a copy of her. Then Baijiu. Baijiu is still a decent healer. I do find that she's a little bit clunky, especially when compared to the premium healer, like Shorekeeper and Verena. But she definitely still has some use, especially if you did not get both of the five-star healer, right? Um, now, with the release of Yohu, she's not as necessary because Yohu is also a healer. Um, so you have a little bit more versatility when it comes to four-star characters that can actually heal your team. That said, she's definitely a useful character to pick up. Getting some copies is definitely not bad. Now, moving on to Yuan Wu. Yuan Wu, in my opinion, is still a little bit underwhelming. I, I don't like his design as well. I'm sorry, it's a Fedora, I just can't get behind it. 
That said, he is a good character to pair with Yinlin because he does have electro damage and coordinated attack, which is uh, nice in those circumstances uh, because it's something that Yinlin um, likes a lot. So this is a pretty good... I think this banner is actually better than the previous one because like all those characters, you can definitely like put them to good use with Yilin directly. Um, and Baiju definitely overall has some good value as a healer. Yuan Wu works well with Yinlin and Lumi is a new character that people are excited for. Now moving on, we do get to see the four star weapon that are going to be coming in with those banners. First and foremost, we are getting the waning red shift. And I believe the reigning wage red uh, blah blah blah. The ra <laughs> The reigning raid the waning red why is this so hard? The waning red shift is a four-star broadblade. Um when you use your resonance skill, you will get six resonance energy as well as an increase to your attack for 16 seconds. So it's very similar to the other weapon we saw earlier, uh, which was Fusion of Creation. This is essentially the Fusion of Creation of Broadblade. So it definitely has some usage there. Uh, it can be useful for Broadblade characters. I assume this is going to be useful for Lumi, right? She might want that resonance energy so she can cast her ulti as fast as possible. She seems to... She could potentially be like a sub dps or a kind of like support ish character that just wants to go in use the skill use your ulti switch out that could be the way she plays so potentially the winning redshift is a decent option for her now jinjo keeper jinjo keeper is actually very good in my opinion in terms of rectifier um and the reason why is that it is a um attack percentage scaling weapon and um when you use your intro skill with the jinjo keeper you get an increase of attack percentage and HP percentage for 15 seconds. Uh, you get like 16% attack percentage and 20% HP percentage, which is actually overall pretty good, makes you hit harder and makes you a bit tankier. This definitely has some uses. It's not the best weapon out there. Like if you want like more DPS, you probably want to go with a weapon like Augments that gives you like some crit rate. Um, if you want energy regen, uh, most people are going to go for Variation, for example, or Rectifier 25. But Jinjo Keeper is definitely a good in-between. If your character does not need that much energy regen, you just want more damage, um, or you you just want like more healing, it could be a weapon for Baiju, for example, because she scales off of HP. So this is not a bad idea at all. Now, moving on, we have Holo Mirage for the last weapon on Banner. And Holo... Um, Holo Mirage is a gauntlet, it's a 4-star gauntlet, it scales off of HP, and essentially when you use your Resonance and Liberation, you get 3 stack of Iron Armor, and each stack is going to increase both your attack and defense by 5% to a total of 15%. When you take damage, you lose 1 stack. So there it is, I think it's not the most exciting one out there, I think there are better weapons, um, especially for like Yuan Wu, you probably want a defense scaling weapon instead. Or something like that, like Amity Accord. Um, if you want some energy regen, there's like the Gauntlet 21D. Uh, Stoneheart is a crit rate weapon, but that's like a battle pass weapon, right? Marcato is an energy regen, but this is like an attack, attack percent scaling. It does give some defense stack, which is not bad at all, but yeah. Um, I'm not necessarily a big, big fan here. Move in on! We can see here we have the Resonator Trial events, obviously, so we can try out those characters, including Lumi, which is awesome. Finally, we are getting a new Pioneer podcast, which is the Battle Pass. And here you can obtain uh, XP for the Battle Pass and get a bunch of rewards, including 680 Astrite, uh, the Golden Eternal Series 4-star weapon, Radiant Tides, and way more including, you know, some pools and stuff like that. So here you can either, uh, there's like two packs uh, on top of that that are being added to the shop, which are going to be the Blade Bloom's Region Bundle, which gives you 400 Astrite and five uh, limited time pools, as well as the other pack that gives you 400 Astrite and five weapon pools. Uh, you can buy those twice at most, and that's it. That's going to be absolutely everything in here. That's a lot of stuff indeed. Uh, but a lot of good stuff. I'm very excited. I'm looking forward to Camellia. I'm looking forward to Lumi for sure. Now, 
Speaking of all of that, we also have a little bit more here. Uh, I'm going to cover that in another video, I think. But I do want to talk about Camellia because while it may be a little bit late for pre-farming purposes, there she is and we know that she's Havoc, she's a weapon user. And we can see all of her essential materials here. Uh, which this is the new boss, this is the new Arya's um, flowers. I mean new, but I, I mean from 1.3. We get some Whispering Cord, the Dreamless Feather. So make sure to farm if you intend to pull for her. She has a beautiful smile here. And uh, yeah, she's looking great. Camellia, a bloom bearer of the Black Shores. Happy to see you again, my beloved Seed of Fate. Awesome. A bloom bearer of the Black Shores, Camellia is free-spirited and dangerously charming. She roams Solaris in search of talent, immersing herself in the present and relishing its pleasures all while remaining true to herself, unburdened by thought of the past or future. All future. Interesting. Now, what has me very, very excited is we actually have some details on her weapon. And the details are as follow. Red Spring, a camellia bird silently unfurls as promised she holds this infinite world in bloom in her palms. Where fine crimson vines twine around her fingertips, the dull ache, like sand scratching against the heart, is proof of your fateful encounter. Very interesting. So the weapon looks absolutely beautiful, but what has me very interested here is that we do see the effect. And those are effects at um, max, um, uh, max level. So this is level 90 at R1. It gives us 24.3% crit rate, which is very, very valuable, which means that Camilla is definitely going to be a DPS. And now the weapon skill beyond the cycle at Scintillation rank 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 increase attack by 12% up to 24. When dealing basic attack damage, the world gains 10% basic attack damage bonus for 14 seconds. This effect can be triggered once per second, stacking up to 3 times. Essentially, we are getting a 12% attack increase and every time you deal basic attack, you gain up to 30% basic attack damage bonus for 14 seconds. Um, that's pretty bananas at R5, if some people are wailing like crazy. This is a 24% attack increase as well as 60% basic attack damage increase. Now on top of that, because it ain't over, when the wielder's concerto energy is consumed, gain 40% basic damage bonus for 10 seconds. Yeah, that's huge. Up to 80% at R5. So essentially, you get 30% from here, 40% from there. That's 70% increase to basic damage bonus. That is incredible. This effect can be triggered once per second and ends when the wielder is switched off the field. There we go. So essentially, what you want to do, you get her in, you make her do... Three attacks over three seconds to get 30%. You're gonna consume your Concerto energy to gain 40%, and there you go, bim bam boom, 70% basic attack increase. It's crazy. Uh, so this looks um, this looks absolutely insane, insanely powerful, insanely insanely powerful. Now on top of that, we also have some information regarding the new sword here. An anchor once used by Ivory Gatekeeper to stabilize some lore. However, it now looks different ever since Ivor Ivory Gatekeeper transformed into a white cat. We have the adorable little cat weapon here. It's uh, very cute. And we do get information here. It's an attack scaling weapon. It gives you 18.2 at R1. And here, gain one stack of his when dealing damage to the target with one stack generated every one second. His, each attack increase the world's attack by 2% for 3 seconds, stacking up to 10 times. So essentially, potentially 20% attack. Um, and considering that we are, we can get the R5 for free, we can go up to 40% attack uh, increase. Now, it's only for 3 seconds, it's like up to 10 times, so you need to, you need to attack very fast. Switching of the wielder clears all stack, getting 10 stack increase the wielder's crit rate by 6% up to 12%. So overall, I feel like this is probably going to be a pretty good weapon, like a pretty good free-to-play weapon for Camellia. Because while Camellia's weapon itself gives her like 18% like no 23% crit rate this one essentially if you have 10 stack she gets 12% crit rate every time she attacks she gets an increase to her attack percentage which is pretty good overall it's definitely not going to be the best weapon out there but it's an option if you're not pulling for a five star there we go so that's going to be everything i'm going to be talking about here uh i hope you appreciated this video i hope it was helpful informative and all of that 
Let me know in the comment down below what has you the most excited for next patch. Are you going to be pulling for Camellia? Are you going to get her weapon? And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Cheers!